Hi there, Cyberfest. My name's Elliot, I'm the head brewer at Arbor Ales, and I'm going to take you through some tasting notes on our beer Massive Azak, and hopefully give you a tour of the brewery from the point of view of some of our brewers and packages. First of all, just a brief kind of overview of the beer. As the name would suggest, it's brewed mostly with Azaka hops. Our malt base is low colour Marisotta and quite a lot of flaked oats, which gives it a great body and fullness, a kind of creamy mouthfeel. Uh, as you might be able to tell if you're into your music, the name is a pun on the band Massive, Massive Attack, who are a Bristol-based band, obviously pretty well known for pioneering the genre of trip-hop. And the can colours are a bit of an homage to one of their seminal albums. In terms of the uh, taste and appearance of the beer, we'd hope to get uh, a nice creamy head on the beer and the instant aroma of tropical fruit and pineapple from the glass. As you can see from the pour, it is a hazy New England style beer with a very soft, low level of bitterness and a beautiful aroma. All the pineapple, bit of peachy kind of aroma going on, lovely. <laughs> Cheers. And now I'll give you a bit of a tour around the brewery. So we're starting off with grain. Sean's grabbing some Warminster malt, Maris Otter Pale Ale here. Uh, it's from a local producer, so it's all good stuff. You see him in a minute, just showing you we buy it in crushed. Um, absolutely brilliant, it's the best base for any beer you can have. Local UK grown barley. Sean's just chucking it into our grist case there. He's gonna mix it in with hot water to make a mash which is the first stage of our brewing process. Here you can see him opening up the water here, smashing in all that lovely malt, mixing it together to make a sugary mash. You can see that malt coming in there. Delicious. We control the temperature on that just by mixing in cold water and monitoring with a the thermometer as it's coming out the other end. You'll see in a minute. Boom, there it is. Sean's just tweaking a bit of this and a bit of that, making sure the temperature's just right. That way we get exactly the beer we want at the end. This is a rinsing out all of the sugars from the, the mash after an hour's mash stand. Didn't show you that bit, it's a bit boring. Once we got all the sugars out and on the boil, the copper will be boiling away in the background here. Uh, and that sterilizes everything. Whilst that's happening, Sean will dig out the uh, spent grain here. All this goes to cows, and they find it absolutely delicious. It helps them put on loads of weight and make delicious beef steaks. A uh, local farmer called Jim picks this up, feeds it to all his cows. Uh, it's probably about half a ton in there, so it's not too much to dig out. And here's Sean is adding all the delicious pellet hops. They're just like the kind of hops you would see on a tree, except they've been smashed up into tiny pieces and then made into pellets. So we put quite a lot of them in at the end to make sure we keep together all of that uh, aroma, that lovely uh, flavor that's in the hops. Don't want to boil all of them right from the beginning of the boil, like an old fashioned brewery, get rid of all of that delicious flavor and aroma. Put them in as late as we can, keep it all in there. We also put a bit in the fermenters as well as dry hop, uh, but I managed to miss getting uh, Sean putting that in, so I have to settle for Whirlpool hops today. In a minute, you'll see the fermenters. Uh, we've got a couple of different kinds. We've got two, uh, we've got six small ones, six big ones. The small ones on the left there, you can see they take a single brew and the big ones take a double brew. We typically ferment for uh, probably uh, about a week before we then start chilling the beer, cropping off yeast, dry hopping, and making sure the clarity is just where we want it because we don't filter any of our beer uh, and we, we don't centrifuge it or anything. We're relying totally on gravity. You can see here all the casks that we fill directly from FV uh, and you'll see Paolo in a minute loading them up by hand onto pallets ready to go out to pubs. 
So here's our canning line. We have an automated depalletizer, you can see here, bringing in those empty cans. And then they'll go onto a conveyor and straight down uh, a chute to be air rinsed and labeled. We carbonate all of our beer uh, in bright beer tank, but we, as I said, we don't filter. So it's all naturally hazy in can. Here you see Shangri-La going into the cans here. Uh, certain beers will be hazier than others, so Shangri-La is mildly hazy. Your Massive Zac will be uh, quite a hazy beer as it's a New England style, as I probably mentioned earlier. So just to keep all of that dissolved oxygen nice and low, oxygen's the enemy of beer, so uh, we get the lids on as soon as possible after those filling uh, arms go up and then seam them on. Rinse off the excess beer, blast them with air, straight down the conveyor and into the hands of Paolo once again, loading up into boxes uh, to be sent out to you guys. And that's pretty much uh, pretty much it from start to finish in a rapid fire in a nutshell way. So uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy drinking your massive Zach. We certainly enjoy making them and uh, have a great time with your uh, Cyberfest. Thanks for watching.